welcome to C3 Kids. We hope you've had a fantastic week. I'm Nadine. Psst, psst, I did. I did. Well, <laughs> seems like we've got Sleeping Beauty in the studio today. Um, why don't you check out the challenge and I'll try and wake her up. Today's challenge is an obstacle course. We have two teams of two, and the first one to press the yes button wins. Let's get to it. Ash and Reese, are you ready? Yep. Let's go. So, Ethan and Georgia, are you guys ready? Yes! Odette, Odette, wake up. <sighs> well, I enjoyed the challenge that the kids did today, but this seems way more of a challenge. Why don't we go to birthdays? If it's been your birthday this week, we'd love to say happy birthday. And if you've got a birthday coming up, click on the details on the screen. I just had the best dream. I was a mermaid and I was swimming and it was my birthday and everybody sung me happy birthday. Well Odette, you've woken up just in time for praise and worship. So why don't you get out of your mermaid fins and you get up on your feet and let's praise and worship together. Then afterwards we're going to have a message all about dreams.
kids, why don't we stand up and let's lift our hands. We're going to sing to our awesome God. Oh, we love to sing to you. We have come to worship you, Lord. Let's sing. You are here, moving in our midst. You are here. Hey, did you enjoy praise and worship? I loved it. My name's Paul and today we're going to be learning about a character in the Bible called Jacob. We're going to find this bit of the story in the first book of the Bible called Genesis and in chapter 28. And maybe you'd like to get your Bible ready and we can have a look at it um, together or you can read it even afterwards. But this character Jacob, uh, the bit of a backstory, his brother was called Esau and their father was called Isaac but he was actually blind. Now, 
Esau, it says in the Bible, was a really hairy man. Now he was the firstborn, which means he was the eldest. Now maybe you've got older brothers or sisters, but in old times, if you were the eldest, you got the inheritance. Now do you remember a few weeks ago, we were talking about the prodigal son? And he went to his dad and said, hey, I've had enough. I actually want all of my inheritance now before you die. Well, Jacob was the younger of two sons and he wasn't going to get the inheritance, but his mum came up with a plan because sometimes mums are cunning. Her idea was to dress Jacob up like Esau, his elder brother. And when he went to serve the favorite food to his father, Isaac, Isaac, who was blind, would maybe get confused of which son he was going to bless, and he would bless Jacob instead of Esau. Now, the Bible says that Esau was really hairy. Hairy arms, probably a really big, hairy beard. And he used to go out hunting, so he used to smell of hunting animals and being out in the fields. So his mother, Jacob's mother, dressed Jacob up so that he looked and smelt like his elder brother. She cooked Isaac, their dad's favorite meal, and gave it to Jacob to take into his father. And when he came in, Isaac, the dad said, who's that? And he goes, I wonder what he, I, I make you, I start thinking, wonder what he might sound like. Hello, uh, my name is Esau. Oh, you don't really sound like my son Esau. Oh, I am really Esau. You'll come a bit closer, he says. I, I want to touch you and I want you to, I want to know that you really are Esau. And the Bible says that Jacob got a bit closer and I expect Isaac put his hands out and he started touching him. Oh, yeah, okay, he feels like it. And he says, come a bit closer. I want to smell you. Oh, don't know how many people you want to smell like that. And he gets a bit closer. He says, mm, yep, you smell like the fields. You smell like Esau, but I'm not sure you sound like Esau, but... I'm going to bless you and I'm going to give you my blessing and everything from my family is going to pass to you. Now, Jacob came out of there and his mum was probably waiting at the door. He goes, yes, yes, I did it. Now, how many of you have pretended to do something that wasn't totally right? Or you've cheated at a game. Can't imagine you've ever cheated at a game of anything. All right. Well, Jacob had f pulled off this amazing thing. He had the blessing of his father. It might sound a bit strange to you and I, but this was like the biggest thing. This was like being given more than a house, more than a car, more than a job. It was being given everything for that future, for his future. So Jacob was probably pretty pleased with himself. His mum was definitely pretty pleased. But it wasn't long after the Bible says that Esau arrived from the fields. He'd been out hunting and he cooked up a food and he took it into his father. And his father said, Who, who's brought me this meal? He goes, it's me. It's Esau. He goes, but you've just been here and given me a, a meal. He said, that, that wasn't me, dad. That wasn't me. And very quickly, both of them realized that he'd been cheated. They'd both been cheated. Now, I would imagine at that point, Jacob probably decided that running away was a really, really, really good thing. And actually the Bible says that his mum went to chat to Isaac and said, well, you did bless him, so let's just send him away. So Isaac actually sends him with a blessing. Now that's quite amazing that the dad, even though he'd known that he'd been cheated and told a lie, still blessed his youngest son. Now Esau, it says, he wasn't so chilled about it. He was really, really, really angry. And the Bible says that Jacob needed to flee. And he fleed. That sounds weird, doesn't he? <laughs> Let's say he ran away, shall we? He ran away to a place. And on the way, he stopped in a place called Haran. Now here, in the Bible, in those days, there wasn't a hotel. You're just in the middle of somewhere. Maybe you've been traveling. You've got camels. They would have traveled with food. They would have brought animals with them and they were tired. And they were looking for somewhere, the Bible says, to put down their head, to rest. 
Now there wasn't a beautiful bed that they could pull up, a lovely hammock that they could put in the trees. It said there was a stone. Jacob got a stone and he put it down and he rested his head on it. Now I don't know how many of you have tried sleeping with a stone as your pillow, but I'm sure that it's probably not that comfortable. But do you know what? The Bible says that Jacob fell asleep. Now I know all the way through this, you've been thinking, Paul, you are a bit strange. We know you're a bit strange, but why do you have a ladder right next to you? It's not because I'm short. It's not because I'm stuck up this ladder and I can't get back down again. But Jacob had a dream. While he was sleeping, it says that in this dream, a ladder appeared between heaven and earth. And up and down this ladder were traveling angels. Now, in these days, I'm not sure if the ladder was much taller than this one, whether we'd be allowed to climb any higher. And I can imagine God and the health and safety people would be going, mm, angel number one now, have you made sure you've signed your height certificate before you head off down to see Jacob at the bottom of the ladder? All right, so this is what's going on. These angels are going up and down. And it's a point where he, Jacob sees that there's a provision that God has for him and it wakes up and he says, truly I have seen God in this place. And it says he takes this stone and he makes a pillar. The Bible, the Old Testament talks about lots of times pillars. When people create, crossed places where God had done an amazing miracle, they would pile stones together in a pillar. When I used to walk in the hills of Scotland, people used to build what's called a cairn and they collected stones together in a big pillar. It was a symbol that something had happened there. And he said, I'm going to name this place Bethel. This is home. And I'm going to return to this at some point. But in that dream, God said to Jacob, I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to go away from you. I've provided you something. And he actually said to Jacob, your descendants are going to be more than the dust of the land. That's, can you imagine how many tiny, tiny little grains make up dust? Millions upon billions upon billions. And God gave him that promise. Even though he was running away and he'd done something wrong, the Bible says that God spoke to him in a dream. And what we're talking about this term is God speaks. And God speaks to us in so many different ways. He can speak to us when we're sleeping. He can speak to us, we maybe call it more of a vision, when you're daydreaming. I used to do a lot of daydreaming at school. All right, maybe you daydream at school. All right, but God can speak to you then. But as we learn to listen, and as we learn to spend time with God, God wants to talk with you more and more. He wants to tell you what he would love to do with you, what he has plans for you. And maybe as you dream, God would speak something incredible for you. So I'm just gonna pray. Dear Lord Jesus, you are incredible. That even when Jacob was sleeping with his head on a hard rock, you had a plan for him. He was running away, but you had a plan to turn his family into something incredible. And this week, I know that you have a plan for me. You have something incredible for me. And I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I've loved that story. And hopefully it's got something for you this week that God wants to speak to you. Maybe it's in dreams this week. So watch out because God's got a message for you. Wow, I love that message. And I decided to keep my fins on. Now it's time for the memory verse. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. John 10, 27. So Nadine, do you think that my mermaid dream was from God? Well, Odette, not all dreams are from God, but the more time you spend talking to God and He talks to you, you'll learn to recognise His voice when He speaks to you in a dream. Wow, that makes so much more sense. Now, I'd really love to pray. Dear Heavenly Father God, I just wanted to thank you for the opportunity that you have given all of us to be able to hear from you, God, even when we're asleep. And I pray that you lead us to learn more about you and that we draw closer to you this week and that we learn to recognize your voice, God. And I pray that over this week that we have dreams from you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sad 
sadly, it's time for us to say goodbye today. But we hope that you've had a wonderful time with us and we hope that you have a fantastic week this week. Until next time, bye. bye.